This tool that we use in uh, elementary school is called a hundreds chart. Students are introduced to this in kindergarten. And a lot of the strategies or skills that they are taught is how to um, count by one. They also learn their skip counting on here, such as counting by fives, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. They um, also count by tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. They can count by twos, count by threes, and they use uh, this to figure out the patterns. One of the patterns that they have to uh, know and figure out is that when you go down the hundreds chart, you are increasing by 10. But when you move up the hundreds chart, you move back, that is decreasing by 10. And they also need to understand that you can count by 10 starting at any number. And we practice this, we do it with the 10s, and then we go to the 5s. So when you count 5, 15, 25, 35, 45, you're actually counting by 10s. The mistake that kids make is they think the number that you start with is what you're skip counting by, and that's not always the case. So when they're skip counting 45, 55, 65, 75, 85, 95, um, those are the different skills and strategies that we use. They can skip count by two. They can recognize the even numbers and the odd numbers. So when we look at two, four, six, eight, ten, those are even numbers. And we talk about that, that they're even whenever you make a model of them and they each have a partner. That's how we start off with the basic understanding of even and odd. So the number four, if you match them up, they both have a partner and that makes it an even number. Whereas the number five, you match these two up, but then this one doesn't have a partner and that's what makes it odd. So these are a lot of the concepts that we talk about on the hundreds chart. The biggest one that I want to talk to you about today and how that um, these strategies in kindergarten continue into mental math strategies in first grade is this concept of moving up and down on the hundreds chart. So... If we are looking at, let me get a different pen color here. So if we are looking at um, increasing and decreasing by tens and by ones, um, we need to recognize the pattern of the number. So I'm going to go ahead and use the purple pen here, and I'm going to draw in a section of the hundreds chart. And this would be very typical about something that we would do in class. So if we were just going to isolate this part of the hundreds chart, we would ask the students, what happens when you start at 37 and you go move down one space? And they would know, oh, we're adding 10. We're increasing by 10. If we go down another space, now we've increased by 20. If we go up the hundreds chart, we go backwards, we are actually decreasing by 10. So a number sentence might look like 37 plus 10, and they would know that that would give us 47 because they can visually see as they move down the hundreds chart. We can also look at 37, start at 37, and we can go over to the right. And if we go to the right, we are increasing by 1. 37 plus 1 plus 2 would give us 39. If we move back to the left, that would indicate that we are decreasing, we are subtracting one. So this is all the strategy that we use on the hundreds chart and we go over every day. When you get into first grade and you start talking about the calculation, now it's students' responsibilities to do some things such as we give them a piece of the hundreds chart and then we put a random number in here. So let's say we put 52 in here. Now they're responsible for filling in the rest of the hundreds chart. So 52, if we move down, we've already said that when we move down, we are increasing by 10. If we increase by 10, that would be 62. Now we need to continue filling in. If we move up, we are decreasing by 10. So that would give us 42. We said when we move to the right, we're increasing by 1, so that would be 43, and one more would be 44. If we move back towards the left, we're decreasing by 1, which would give us 41. So that is a very typical way for us to 
uh, practice these mental math and these mental strategies of adding and subtracting 10 and 1. Um, you can make them look however you want. There's no right or wrong way. Maybe something such as this. So if we had 99 here, we want to go up. We're de decreasing by 10. So we have 89, 79. Now if we go this way, we're decreasing by 1. So that would be 78. If we go to the right, we are increasing by 1, and that would give us 100. So those are the mental strategies of 10s and 1s in completing the 100s chart. It's important that your student can do uh, this skill, but you always want to start with the numbered hundreds chart first. And when you start giving them um, these puzzle-like pieces of the hundreds chart, start with a couple numbers in and let them recognize, and then start with just a one, the one number. You can take this concept to the strategy of subtracting tens and ones if you have the number line. And let's say we had... 62, and we wanted to show 62, and we wanted to show subtracting 10, subtracting 10, subtracting 10, just like we did on the hundreds chart, and then maybe subtracting one, or let's change it up and do adding one. So if we go backwards, it would be 62, we're going to subtract 10, and we would have 52, that takes care of this 10, 42, that takes care of this 10. 32, that takes care of that 10, but now we have to add 1 back to it, so that would be 33. And that's just practice going back and forth on the number line. So you have two visual representations of those 10s and 1s here. You have the 100s chart with the 100 chart puzzles, and you have the number line. Both are excellent strategies for students to use.